Hi all, I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of our nutrition model and how it's going to work for you, particularly if you're getting started with your nutrition. And when I mean start, I mean if you failed other things or you've done one diet and it's taking about two weeks or three weeks for you to kick it all in because of frustration, despair or lack of accountability and support on it. I don't know, for whatever reason, there's a whole multitude of reasons that may apply to you. But we've created a very simple step-by-step uh, -step, uh, pyramid whereby you build a foundation um, with good habits and, uh, and making sure your environment is set up for success before moving on to the next habit which is a closer look at your calories and portion control before moving on to the next step which is called your macronutrients and then the final cherry on the top is where you may dig deep for a short period of time uh, and really hone things in uh, for optimal results. So it makes sense that you'd start at the bottom and work your way up the top. And unfortunately, what most of us do when we grab, say, a diet book from the from the stationery stationery shop or a bookshop, we open it up, uh, and ultimately, it's taking us straight up to level four because we have to change a whole multitude of things. We have to learn how to shop differently. We have to learn how to prepare our foods. We may not know how to cook. Uh, we may not know how to prepare um, and shop right. So. It's so asking you to do things on a very, very shaky foundation. Now, it's not to say you won't succeed there, far from it, but it will be extra challenging and may even bring more stress, which ultimately would set you off and tip you over the edge into doom and gloom and thinking you can't do this when that's just clearly not the case. So what we do is we start at level one with foundations. And these are your habits. These are your starting points. This is where you are ultimately finding out what is your weak link. What is the habit that you know if you broke the camel's back with it, it would have a huge knock-on effect elsewhere. For some people, for instance, it's their sleep. I'm just gonna use sleep as an example, but their poor sleep habits, think about it like this, your poor sleep habits, you, you're a night owl, and you survive on six hours of sleep a night, and over the course of the week, you start to feel tired, a bit, a bit cranky, your energy starts to drop, you're not gonna feel really inclined to do much exercise or move, you're gonna become more sedentary, and also, what's interesting, and anecdotally, I haven't found much science on this, but your cravings start to become a little bit more exaggerated. I know personally that's uh, definitely my case when I've had a, a, a week of not sleeping too much, uh, particularly later in the day. So you tend to make poor food choices. So you can see how if you fix your sleep, it have a knock-on effect elsewhere. And this goes for other things like making time for breakfast, drinking enough water, and so forth. So it's very, very important that you identify yourself. And we emphasize at Sphere uh, a high level of what we call food consciousness. So in this case, you would start a food diary with a bit of pen and paper or you could use more sophisticated apps like MyFitnessPal. Whatever you do, you write it down and you become accountable and you develop a level of consciousness about what you're trying to achieve and do. Uh, and there's a series of 10 habits that we teach um, for a range from water intake to breakfast to having, making sure your vegetables are present at every meal and making sure you have adequate protein in your diet to succeed and, and knowing how much good fats to consume. And then we take it up to level two once we've got the foundations in place. Now some, some people might jump straight there. They're, they're eating pretty well, but just, they just can't get anywhere with it. And sometimes what we find is that uh, people who have extraordinarily clean diets and they're following really wholesome foods, maybe a paleo approach or some form of clean eating, they still struggle to drop body fat. Now, ultimately, you have to have a level of consciousness about your calorific intake. You have to, because it's, it's, it's a physiological law. You can't defy it. Um, now you can tiptoe around it and say you can eat clean and and uh, and just make do with that. Well, yeah, that's that's true. If you've come from a diet which has been ultimately based around processed foods, you, you will drop weight because the body's getting healthier and it's physiologically impossible to be healthy and fat. But you still have to have a, a, um, a grasp of your calorie intake and portion sizes. Um, a lot of people, for instance, snack on things like nuts. Uh, and uh, could not bag a whole bag of them um, in one city, which is very easily consumable. Unfortunately, that could be the one thing that's going to bring your plants. So it's very important you have a, a grasp of calories. So what we do is we ask people again to use uh, my fitness pal or other whatever app that you're used to, but get an understanding of what you're starting with. Um, and and funny enough, some people actually under eat, so they will very they will struggle to put on muscle mass uh, and they will struggle to burn fat equally in equal measures. So as you move up to the next level, which is macronutrients, this is where we get a little bit more uh, complex with our diet strategies and nutritional strategies. 
macronutrients are the key um, pillars, the building blocks of our diet. So we've got things like protein, which is the building blocks. We've got the energy sources, such as carbohydrates, and to an extent fats. Um, and we've also got things like water as well, and vitamins and minerals, which are kind of the cement to the house, the building blocks. So you can manipulate these, and everyone is, tends to be kind of a little bit different in that with this respects. You get some people who thrive on a high protein, moderate fat, low carbohydrate approach, and you get other people who thrive on a moderate protein, uh, high fat, low, low carbohydrate approach, or commonly referred to as the ketogenic diet, and then you get other people who uh, need to time their carbohydrates so they have a moderate protein intake a moderate fat and a moderate um, carbohydrate intake. So it really depends on your individual goals and what you want to get out of, and to a certain extent your genetic disposition to the foods and the macronutrients that are in your diet. So without getting too complicated around it, it's quite a lot there. Then the last thing, the cherry on top, is what we call our 28 day lean, mean and green program. It's, uh, it's a short term program, but really yields uh, fantastic results. And this is where we get a little bit more you know, sophisticated with our, with our um, partition of macronutrients uh, and hidden numbers and so forth but it really is useless unless you are uh, unless you understand the levels one two and three i.e what your macronutrient profile how you best respond to it uh, how many calories you need to consume on a daily basis to, hit, to reach your goals and obviously the foundations so you're not adding more stress onto an already stressed uh, being so those are the four levels um, they're key key to follow and uh, they're probably the easiest way of breaking nutrition down. Find out where you start uh, and, uh, and obviously in the Transformation Center there are the resources to follow and, uh, and help you along with your journey.